context of this argument. <laughs> oh, it, oh, is that what this is about stabbing Trudeau? Is that what this is all about? You're trying to kill Trudeau with a pocket knife. And Adrian, is that what you is that what you wanted to say tonight, Adrian? Is that you want to go back in time and kill Father Trudeau so he doesn't have a kid? Is that the? Oh, that's the thing. He can get away with it. No, you're not allowed to say things like that. Um, I, I, I'm not. But only if you can get that blade across the border. Right. Which is. Uh, well, you know, I. It's not a real tight itinerary this summer on our summer trip. We could try to work in uh, a little swing over to Ottawa. That's right beside you, isn't it? I say we could probably swing by Ottawa while I'm there, right? It's it's right next door to you. Yeah. My my understanding of Ontario is it's there's Toronto and then everything else is a part of Toronto, so it can't be that far. No, not really. So uh, maybe. I'm part of the GTA. I'm about an hour's drive to Toronto. I'm part of the greater Toronto area. So what do you want to see? Sorry, guys, what do you want to see happen, Adrian? Do you want this completely taken away? Well, I don't, I don't think it should be completely taken away. I just think that this, that, with that thing could relax on it a little bit. There should be absolutely no laws regarding knives whatsoever, is what you're saying. I, I, think we, I, think, I don't think they should completely take away the laws of And if you agree or disagree, whatever you're talking about, I don't care. So if you want to respond to what Adrian is saying, hang on, guys. If you want to respond to what Adrian is saying tonight, you can uh, give us an email, Eric and Gord at Outlook.com. This is our guest, Adrian, who's saying it should be mandatory for every Canadian to carry a big knife, and uh, we should all have to own them and stab each other freely. Uh, Eric and Gord at Outlook.com, if you agree with him. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's true. I mean, you could, but you shouldn't. I don't even know if you 
Right. That's uh, actually true. We looked up the last time we talked about this. We looked up the stats on that, and uh, a good percentage of them were with kitchen knives, and another a large percentage were by children under the age of twelve. Um, so they're, they're not a popular tool in the use of uh, or in the commission of crime by any means. Yeah. Well, they, they Well, again, and now. No, go ahead. And this was. And let me tell you, I know from personal experience, I just learned this recently, that if uh, they ask you if you have a police record, and you say, well, yeah, everybody has synchronicity on cassette somewhere, uh, they don't find it funny. Um, yeah, they, they, they don't find that funny. And we've got some pretty brutal cops. I know you're in North Bend, so if you've got the RCMP, they're kind of, uh, they march to the beat of their own, uh, drums there. But we've got VPD down here, and they just won't hesitate to just shoot you. Especially if you have a knife. I'm in the middle of a podcast. Oh, hey! <laughs> I don't think they heard you. But it'll be recorded. They just they didn't hear you. What? Am I on your podcast now? You are, actually. Sorry, I got some, some co-workers want to come say hi to you guys because you're a big deal. Yeah, sorry, uh, we're we just having some trouble with uh, our audience here tonight. Oh, sorry. I think you can just pick up where, where we interrupted you there. Sorry, man. Hey, 40 year old man, same worry every weekend. I mean, I got it. These guys are under high pressure situations, but 
I'm not sure that he even would be entitled to keep that. I think he's allowed to take it to the station, and then you're allowed to send someone to go pick it up. That's my knowledge of the law. It could be a little... You're right, but that's why they have to give you a receipt. They have to give you this piece of paper that tells you that what they've taken, the description of the item, who they took it from, and how you can get it back. Right. It's kind of like, if I give you that, he's stealing your knife. It's kind of like a drive... It's like kind of like a speeding citation or a written citation for, like, public interrogation or something like that, but it's, it's written as a receipt for your item that they may have come in. I'll tell you the greatest thing you can do if you ever do get a fine for that uh, anything, public intoxication or anything like that, um, they are not allowed to refuse your payment. If you go in to pay it, uh, they have to accept it. I learned this when I was very young. I went in and paid a $150 fine in pennies that I unrolled and put in a box and then poured a Coke over so it would be nice and sticky the next morning. It took in $150 in unrolled pennies, and they're not allowed to refuse payment. <laughs> Have a good weekend rolling those, boys. That's great. There's a guy in the States that did that. He had a fine. Yeah. He paid it all up. He paid all up. He paid it 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 Oh yeah, it took two of us to carry this box. It wasn't easy to get in there, and there, and someone had to sit there and roll those. <laughs> Another good tip, whether it's the CBSA or any of our municipal police forces, uh, you can demand to be served in French. That's your constitutional right. Um, you don't have to speak a word to them until they provide a French-speaking officer, and uh, you don't actually have to speak French to demand that. That's everybody's right. Yeah. So you have to wait till the guy shows up and then say, I demand, uh, I demand to understand it? Well, no, and then you just sit there and you don't understand a word the guy says to you, and it's hilarious for hours. You gotta, you gotta have nothing better to do that day. Um, you, you have to make sure you've got nothing better to do that day, and you don't mind being tasered, and other than that, it's hilarious. Whatever. Thank you. 